Hey, and welcome to the Destiny Church Podcast. Today, I'm excited to have Pastor Andrew Conley with us. If you have been a member of Destiny Church over the years, then you've probably seen him uh, in different levels of beardedness or or another. Uh, but if you haven't attended Destiny, uh, he serves uh, as the Connections Pastor here at Destiny Church. And uh, man, he's got an awesome family. And so, man, Pastor Andrew, welcome to the to the podcast. Why don't you take a second, tell us a little bit about yourself, just give us some info. Okay. Uh, well, man, I have been at Destiny for uh, almost 20 years now, uh, which is like half time. my life. Yeah. I'll be 40 next year. So, um, yeah, I've, I've, I've been here since like 2001, um, serving here for a long time. Um, I'm married, been married for almost 15 years now to Elise, uh, and we have three boys. Um, so our life is covered in blood and mud and tears and many adventures. So um, I've got uh, my oldest son, uh, Ebenezer, is five. He's getting ready to turn six. Um, I have a three-year-old, Levi, uh, and then an almost two-year-old, Miles. Uh, and so, man, it's a uh, it's an enjoyable, crazy life with them. I'm sure you can understand. You're a dad of all boys, so yeah, yeah, four boys, and it's it gets crazy. But I do know your oldest is far more adventurous and in daredevil than any of my kids. <laughs> He's like crazy. He is, man. You know, all our all our kids are so different. Um and it's fun to just watch the the difference in them. But yeah, Ebenezer sure is, man. Like he's uh he ups he makes me up my game. You know, I have to like I, I tell him like, all right, if you can do it, then daddy should be able to do it. And that still works for now. But you know, it, it he challenges me. It's so. not gonna be long. He climbs everything, mm-hmm. bikes off of everything, ramps off everything. He's wild. Mm-hmm. Yep, so absolutely, man. It's, he it's may fun. end up on the X Games or something. <laughs> it wouldn't wouldn't shock me. Uh, that's true. Well, hey, today I'm excited to talk about uh, something that's important to uh, to our church, but also an idea that I know is important to you personally, and we've we've you've experienced it in different ways. Um, but you know, one of the things, and man, churches have gone through this in different levels, and different churches have different names. Um, we call them small groups. Mm-hmm. Some people call it connection groups. Uh, you know, they're, they're cell groups, cell groups yep. life groups. Uh, I mean, really, other than just the time of day, they're almost like old school Sunday school. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's yep. a lot in common. But we, we're going to talk about just this idea of within a church, a group of believers gathering in a smaller gathering, mm-hmm. in a smaller setting. And and we want to talk about why do we do small groups? What What is it about small groups that's important? Why do we think that small groups is a, a thing that's important? And I know that you have some uh, you're if, if you're over small groups at, at Destiny Church, you're over all the the different group leaders, and you help with the training and all that kind of different mm-hmm. pieces and stuff. Yep. But w- more than just that, that how because we could talk about the how and maybe we will. But really, w- why is it that small groups are important? Well, you know, small groups have one simple purpose, and that's to bring people together. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's so much life change that happens in the context of authentic relationships. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, it's it's very difficult uh, to get a whole lot of life change when our spirituality is just one way. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when all we do is just receive from one other person, um, it's difficult to live that out. It actually takes other people to practice our faith to mm. practice our theology. Um, and so it, it it's important for us, like we see the value of small groups because when we get together in that smaller setting, I mean, there's a lot of good things that come out of it, but really just coming together um, from the big setting of big church, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, in the big room where we get a chance to, to worship together and all the things that come from that corporate setting that are fantastic. Uh, but in that small setting, it's just good because really there's a lot of depth that you get there relationally that's hard to get anywhere else. Yeah, for sure. So I agree with you, but let me play devil's advocate for for a second. Okay. Like, what if I were to say, listen, like, I love going to church on Sunday. It's great. Or watching online or going in person and the big church is good. But, you know, I just, I don't want to go to small groups. I don't want, I don't think I need like friendships. Like, I don't think I need relationships. Like, I'm good. Like, me and Jesus is all we, we, we need. What, what would be your your counter to someone who's on that kind of uh, idea? Well, I mean, first off, I can totally relate to that person because at my own, like in my own heart, I am that person. Okay, yeah. <laughs> like I am that guy who's like, I, like I've had, you know, good conversations with Elise of the moments where like, this is good. I don't need anybody else. Mm-hmm. I've got you. 
got the kids. I don't need anybody. So like I kind of can feel out that devil's advocate side because I've, I've been there and sometimes am there in, in my own personal struggles. But, you know, like it, it's a good question because, like I said, it, it's hard. It's hard to practice loving people without people. Mm, yeah. it's, it's hard to practice um, faith. It's hard to practice all the things that we, we talk about in church, even the things that are wrapped up in our own culture code. Like the, the way that we are as a church is almost impossible to do if there's not other people to do it with. Um, you know, like I said, there's, there's just so many aspects of our faith that you can consider in that. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, like I said, when I, when I lean into that direction and in my own spiritual growth, um, I realize that, that my growth gets stinted. Mm. When I just reclude, you know, or get reclusive and, and seclude to myself, um, but when I'm around other people, I get a chance to take the things that we talk about in in the messages that are preached here. When we open the Word of God and it enlightens something to us, now when I get together with another group of people that I get to trust in and get to know and do life with, um, man, I, we get to go both ways in our right. in, in communication and, and in our struggles um, and really work that out together. Do you find yourself, maybe this is just me, because I found myself in this way too, I, like, I make assumptions for people. Like I assume okay. I already know how they're going to respond to this or I assume I already know what they think about this or I assume what kind of knowledge they have. And what I found is I participated in more small groups, whether it's a, a formal small group setting or mm-hmm. just an informal group. I all of a sudden find out that people are not as predictable as you think they are. <laughs> and, and people have a lot more opinions and a lot more knowledge than than maybe, and maybe it's just my own arrogance, but then you maybe give them credit for. Yeah. And you hear points of views and, and, and sides of things that, man, you like – there's been cases where I thought, man, they don't care. Like they are just like this person or this group of people. They, they're just here because it's whatever. And then you get into it and it's like, man, I was totally wrong. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, we need each other. And I think we've, to your point, I think sometimes we forget how much we need each other and not just certain ones. Like I think for me, when I look at relationships and even friendships mm-hmm. or as that translates into small groups, sometimes I can look at a group of people that I think like, I need to be in relationship with them because I bet you I'd learn something from them. Yeah. But then there are people that are completely unexpected, at least to me. But, you know, God, like God has worked on their heart in their life, just like he's been on me. And he's doing something in their life that I can see and learn from. And so, yeah, like sometimes it's the unexpected and sometimes it's the unexpected people that, that, like you said, maybe it's just our own arrogance where it's just like, I don't know how much I could learn from you, but, but never let, I can, if we can learn something from everyone, yeah. it really is a, you know, a, a part of our spiritual growth. Can you speak to, cause I've, I've experienced this as well. I've, I've had this idea and I've even, even, even recently, not even like, Oh, I used to be this way and now I'm more holy. But like, even recently I find myself like, what am I going to get out of this gathering? What am I going to get out of going to the small group or what am I going to get out of this? And all of a sudden, I really had this idea of like, why am I always asking, what am I going to get out of it? Mm-hmm. And why am I not asking, what could I potentially bring to it? Yeah. Like, do you do you find that? Like, I, I, I've noticed that sometimes I can find myself kind of more in a consumer version of, of, of well, really everything, but church yeah. not being excluded. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I, I think, wait, we're, we're, we are called to this in some way. Yeah. I mean, that's a great point. Um, it, it's a really good, uh, interesting thing to consider because uh, there's so much that we do get from a small groups, but you're right. There's going to be moments where I- as much as I might need something from someone else, there's someone else in that group that really needs something from me, um, which ought to humble me to realize that I need to bring myself to the table, whether I, whether I receive something or not. Mm-hmm. Um and and on the same side, humble myself that I'm not just there because I'm everyone else's answer. Like sure, I'm not. Yeah. Like we're we're the answer for each other. I think that's why the Bible tells us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. We we need each other, um, both in the big church and in in a I guess we'll call it a little church atmosphere, which is a small group. Um, yeah, there's so much that we can get from each other, but so much we have to give to each other. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think that. 
you know, this this understanding of this symbiotic relationship is important. Mm. Like, because I, I think that it's very easy because we all get where we're at the point where we're tired. And I think that mm -hmm. if you've ever been part of a small group, there's that moment when it's time to get ready, especially you got kids and everybody, and you just literally have this thought of like, I don't really want to go to this. And honestly, it's probably true for church too. Like, oh my gosh, yeah. I don't want to do this. I'm tired. This isn't going to be good. This isn't going to be worth this effort or this pain or waking up early or putting the, you know, fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. And yet something happens, you get there. And then at the end, most times, at least for me, I find myself, it's a, this idea of it was worth it. And sometimes mm -hmm. I can't even really tell you why. Yeah. You know, yeah. I can't tell you there's this thing or I had this revelation or like the, the spirit moved and I was just moved to tears. Like, I can't tell you why it was mm -hmm. worth it. I just am in the car and going home and it's just like, I'm glad I came. Yeah. W what do you think? What, what What is that? Like, why why is that? I think part of that gets wrapped up in, you know, you know, the Bible teaches us that it's not good that for us to be alone. Mm, yeah. And so even outside of just what we could get from a, a marriage of like not good for man to be alone, that like having a spouse, but but really just mankind, that like we are not designed to be alone. Mm -hmm. Like we're designed to live in a community, to be dependent on that community, but also to be to be dependent on in that community. Because like you said, it it goes both ways. Um and so, yeah, there's, there's so many things that can happen in a small group setting that you can walk away with and never know how good or life giving yeah. it's going to, it's, it's going to be. Um, and so part of it is, I think for many people can be just a spiritual discipline. Mm, like yeah. a, a discipline doesn't always have to be something you enjoy. Like sometimes the discipline is doing something you don't enjoy because you know, there's an end result. Sure. Like so many of us, there are things that we want out of life, but we're not necessarily willing to walk down the road that gets us there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And sometimes small groups, like we all want life giving relationships with people. Yeah. And small groups is an avenue. So sometimes we can feel like, man, I'm, I don't know if I'm willing to walk down that road. But if we will, the other side is that life-giving relationship that we've always wanted for us and for the, the that group of people. Yeah, that's good. And I think, you know, when we're talking about relationships, right, mm -hmm. relationships, I think that's something that maybe you can't, like you can't minimize, you can't make it too small. Like, because the thing about relationships are relationships, they grow over time, mm -hmm. but the need it's different. Like there's going to be seasons where a relationship may not have a need because things are mm -hmm. good. Yeah. But then things can go bad, whether someone can get sick or someone can get injured or, you know, there can be a loss or there can be a, you know, a struggle. There can be a lot of things. Uh, and all of a sudden the relationship needs something. Yeah. And I think the, how strong the relationship really is what creates how deep that need can be met within the context of that relationship. Yeah. And I think if there's just nothing, like we have no relationship and then all of a sudden you're moving, well, I'm not going to go help you move. Like we have no relationship, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, and, but, but, and there's worse things that can happen. So how do, how do small groups or how can we, as people who go into small groups, because even within the small group, you may have relationships or closer relationships with some individuals within yeah. there. How, how do we develop and continue to develop those relationships and what does that look like? Hmm. Yeah, that's good. You know, I, I think that part of coming into a small group, uh, especially one that we get to know over time, is that it's a good place to be transparent and to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that doesn't always have to be like, even when I coach small group leaders or when I'm helping someone find a small group, like that's not something you have to walk in with day one. Like I don't need to walk in day one and just drop my deepest, darkest secrets out on the day. But, but through time, Right. Like as yeah. we build relationship, there's going to be moments where I get to be uh, progressively transparent with my life, which means in, in some of the moments that are difficult, I'm also becoming more progressively vulnerable with a group of mm. people. Yeah. Um, and in doing so, then there's there's a place not just to really connect. Right. Because connection happens in small groups. It, it can be difficult sometimes to connect in the big church setting. Sure. Especially like here we are in the middle of everything going on COVID for so many people, it's like, I'm here and I'm getting out, Right, you know, yeah. like I'm trying to, but, but if there's a willingness to get in a small group setting and, and, and maybe even if they need to be distanced from each other, so we're healthy and safe, but getting in that setting 
together. It gives us a chance to connect, but also it's it's a place of protection. When we're transparent and we're vulnerable, mm-hmm. it gives us um, an opportunity to protect someone else and to be protected. You know, I, I mean, I don't know about you, like I, I can think of like certain memories growing up where I put myself in... Uh, interesting predicaments. Mm-hmm, sure. Um, and it was always good to have somebody who had my back. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, many times, I mean, you know, from a, from a natural standpoint, I probably picked a fight or two that I shouldn't have picked. Sure. I never finished that fight because I had people who could finish it for me. Yeah. They were, they were in my corner. Um, and having that in your corner, it makes you bolder. I think the same is true spiritually speaking. Mm-hmm. Like we want to have people that we know are going to be in our corner, protecting it. Like if they say they're going to pray for us, they mean it. Yeah. You know, it's different than sometimes maybe a cross by in church where it's like, this is what I'm going through. And someone says, I'll pray for you. And sometimes I might feel like maybe they will. Sure. But in a small group setting, it's like, I'll see you next week. Yeah. I'll know, you know, like I'll know, we'll know together. Like, did I pray for you? Did you Mm -hmm. pray for me? Because it's, you know, my vulnerability and what I've opened up to myself. And now there's someone in my back. There's someone has my back, yeah. which is so big. Well, I think what's interesting or what's really important is you talked about the idea, like there are different levels of relationships and what is going to really be the, the deciding factor of how deep a relationship is, is really how transparent and how vulnerable you are with someone. Mm-hmm. Because the more open and honest we are, and again, you don't just come out and say, you know, the first time you're like, hi, I'm Jonathan. And it all started when I was four years old and <laughs> You know, my parents took my pacifier away too late. Like, hmm. we, you know, it's not it's not that like, but when we 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 live in a world where between social media and really just social constructs within how we do, we all walk around. I've heard the example. We all walk around with a mask, just pretending mm-hmm. like we're fine. And the problem is we don't really want to walk around that mask, but we don't want to take down that mask unless someone else take down their masks. Mm-hmm. But really, we're just waiting for each other to do it. And then I'm not going to take mine until you take down. Well, I don't want to take mine until you take down. And then you, we just kind of continue this whole. And, and church is really known to has a, a reputation for having yeah. people who have this like superficial, like, hey, how are you doing today? And it's like blessed and favored and faithful to the end. And so are you. And the reality is they're dying inside. Like they're not okay. Yeah. They're hurting. They're, well, you know, they're sick. They lost something. Their marriage is falling apart. But they tell everyone, you know, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Even though they're not. And so how do we, you know, how do we realize that, or maybe even better than how, like, I guess within small groups, I feel like is the process of the natural process of creating environments where it's safe to be honest, Yeah. you know, where it's safe to have someone to say, this is what's going on. You yeah. know, I'm dealing with this. I'm struggling with this. I know that, you know, Destiny's had different levels of small groups. It's looked different mm-hmm. with different names and, and whatever, but, you know when I've gone through some of the biggest struggles in my life, it was people within my small group that I had developed a close enough relationship that I could talk with what was going on and be honest. And it took time, but, but it took, it took a long time. Wasn't the first week, wasn't even the Mm -hmm. second week that we were going to talk like that, but it it took time. And why is it that this idea of being like transparent or vulnerable, why is that so scary? Well, I mean, I think for most of us, like we're far more comfortable with the facade that we can put up than we are with our own self. I, I think part of it comes back to most of us aren't e- honest with our own self mm, of yeah. who we are. So sure. how am I supposed to be honest with you about who I am? Cause I haven't come to grips with yeah. my own, you know, how demons, much you're my own. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and one of the things you mentioned, I think that's important in this was, was that aspect of time. It takes time. Uh, sometimes we get to take our mask off willingly but sometimes when we get repeated time with people, it just comes off or honestly, sometimes, and I don't know if this is a weird way to put it. Sometimes they just take it off for us. Mm. Like I can't put on a mask with my wife or kids. Sure. That's impossible. Yeah. And the reason I can't is because they've had enough repeated time with me that they see who I really am. In the context of small groups and authentic relationships, if I give myself over to it repeatedly time after time after time, eventually... I will not be able to keep up with the mask. It's going to come off. I'm either going to take it off or they're going to be like, wait, I see you every time and I can tell something's different this time. I Mm -hmm. see something in you. And and I think when that does, it gives us the the freedom to be honest with someone. And sometimes that's the first open door to be honest with our own selves, which is really where 
we get our freedom from. You know, we get our, we, we might be forgiven of our sins, but so many times the, the freedom that we need from our struggles and our sins comes from being honest with someone else, honest with ourselves, so we can open our hearts to what Jesus wants to do. Mm, that's good. I think that, and I know that it's been misconstrued, but that's really kind of what I think probably when it talks about, the Bible talks about confessing your sins to one another. Mm-hmm. You know, we know, we believe that but through through context, I don't need to confess my sins to you to get forgiveness because that, that comes through Jesus. Yeah. But sometimes this idea of, of confession or, you know, which can have a bad connotation if you grew up in church wrong, but this idea of sharing a struggle with another human being, not Jesus, mm-hmm. is it's not to get forgiveness, but no. it's to be able to get healing. Yeah. Like sometimes I need to have this confession to be able to get the freedom that comes that that's needed to find healing and ultimate mm-hmm. ultimate freedom, which is what Jesus wants for me. It's what He died yeah. for, for. But you know, I think that sometimes there's this idea of saying like, "Hey, I struggle with this, or I deal with this, or yeah. I, I had this issue," uh, and it can be so embarrassing because I think ultimately we're afraid that if we show our true selves, people may not like us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, if I'm if I'm real, they may not like me because probably all they like is this the facade that I've put up. Yeah, and if you really knew who I was, if you really knew the struggles, if we really knew the issues, then you probably wouldn't want to talk to me anymore. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there is there's freedom in confession, like you said. Not necessarily like we've been forgiven of our sins from Jesus, but we can be forgiven and still in the dark corners of our life be hiding secrets that are growing in the darkness. Yeah, and what confession with other believers does is it drags out of the darkness into the light, that thing that I'm trying to hide. Even if it's the thing I'm already forgiven of, mm-hmm. yeah. if I'm still trying to hide it, I'm, I'm giving it power. But when I when I pull it out into the light and, and now it's not a secret anymore, then again, going back to the idea of that like we can connect with each other, but also we can protect each other in mm-hmm. small groups. Now when it's out on the table, and then hopefully by me doing it, someone else is going to do it too. Sure. Yeah. Um, it gives us a chance to to really look after and protect each other because we see the vulnerabilities yeah. in each other. I don't think I've ever shared in any context from an open, vulnerable position and not had it be reciprocated. I'm not saying that it's never happened in the history of the world. Yeah. Uh, but I, I know in a lot of contexts, a lot of times people I just think are looking for the first person to be honest. Mm-hmm. You know, that first person to go. I've been in several pastors meetings with other pastors in town and different things. And, you know, you can tell it's, it's hard. Like what they do is hard. Like what they're dealing with is hard, especially right now. It's a hard season. Mm -hmm. And you can tell someone's just waiting for the first person to give a real honest answer so that they can all give a real honest answer. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're surprised because the ones you think are doing the best, Mm -hmm. they're the ones who are struggling the most. Uh, And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's hard because we get programmed into like, how are you doing? Great. I'm doing great. I'm Mm -hmm. doing great. And the reality is sometimes, listen, hopefully most of the time that's the truth, mm-hmm. but there's going to be times that's not the truth. Yeah. And, and it's okay. And, and it may be outside of your control. Why? Uh, I, I had a lunch with the pastor the other day, or I was at a luncheon with the pastor mm-hmm. the other day and I ran into him, hadn't talked to him in a while. And I said, Hey, how are things going? He's like, Oh man, things are great. And he goes, man, I don't know why I just said that. It's not true. Somebody broke into our new building and did like $150,000 worth of damage to our air conditioners on the top and then flooded our building on accident. He's like, so I'm not doing great. Like, yeah. I'm pretty frustrated about that. He's like, yeah. I don't know why I said that. But it's because we can just easily fall into this, oh, yeah, I'm good, Yeah. when it's not true. So, yeah. okay, so here's the here's the practical, because you, you're you one of the things, and you do a lot, tons of stuff here, but uh, one of the things is we're, we're compelling people to join small groups. So what if someone came to you or you were talking to someone who said, you'd be in a small group. And their, their st- statement was, yeah, I went to a small group. I was a part of a small group. I didn't like it. What do you say to that person? I mean, they might not have liked it. Sure. It might have been terrible. Um, <laughs> I, I never want to like take away someone's experience because sometimes there have been like terrible small group experiences. Just because we make ourselves vulnerable doesn't mean that the other person's going to treat it the way we hope they do. Sure. Right. And, um, or maybe you tried something that just the format didn't work. Um, to me, I say, let's always be willing to try again. Mm-hmm. Like if we're going to find our tribe, if we're going to find that people that belong to, and again, like we belong to the church, 
And then, like, if you're a member of Destiny, like, okay, we belong to Destiny, but there's still layers of relationship of finding your belonging, the, the, the kinds of things that you circle your life around that are together. And I think if we can try and find those, again, we're walking down a pathway that's going to lead to the place we want to go. And just because we tried that path before yeah. and, and it wasn't working, that's okay. Like, let's, let's try again. Um, let's do this again um, because it's, it's worth it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's it's worth it to to try again, and um, even if this time is the one that fails, that that's okay. Like we're gonna get there. Like eventually we're gonna find that group, and and you know with the way things are formatted here, with you know everything, our, our group leaders are allowed to form their group with their passions and their interests in mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it makes it so you can find a group of of people that that again, there's a layer of interest in life. Um, we, we follow semester basis, right? right? Like we have some older groups that still, they kind of just, they keep going, but all of our new groups, they, they come in and they start and they finish with the three semesters in mm-hmm. the year. So yeah, right. it's, it's a way for people to, um, it, it's what we call on ramps and off ramps. If you find the group, you try this one again and you're like, man, I think I'm going to love these people. You might get in and find out you don't. Well, it's an easy off ramp at the end of the semester, and then we'll find that next group. Yeah. Um, and and like I said, or even just getting onto a group, it's it's easier. So, you know, I, I tell people like try again. Like y- Yana works with me with these small groups, and, and her and I together, we can figure ways out to get you in that right group. Awesome, awesome. And so we're getting close to the end of our time here, but as we, we're wrapping up, what's your what's your last kind of compelling thought or idea of why someone should be in a small group i mean we've given a bunch of reasons yeah but, yeah but if you were to just give the short minute close or summation what what was the biggest thing man um yeah all the things we mentioned are good but but honestly for me like in my journey of my own faith like i'm trying to daily look and live my life more like Jesus. Mm, And if I'm going to do that, I'm going to have to do it with and around people. Mm. And small groups are one avenue of this that I'm going to get to live out my faith. I'm going to get to love well. Um, I'm going to get to serve well. All the things important to my spiritual growth of becoming the person, not just that I want to be, but the person God's destined me to be, Mm. is going to have to happen with other people. So why not layer my relationships um, around other people who love Jesus like me, who love this church like me, who love these other components of life because they're passionate and interested in the same things like I am, to, to in the end have a life that is richer and fuller. I'm not just waiting to get to heaven one day so it's good. No, I'm, I'm, I want to live a, a rich, full life here and mm-hmm. now, yeah. and I don't get that without other people. Yeah, no. I think that's good. Well, that's the sales pitch. Hey, there you go. That's it. Join a small group. How many small groups are you in right now? Am I in? Yeah. Uh, officially. Officially. I'm, I'm, I'm only in one right now. I'm officially in two. Okay. But I only occasionally attend them with consistency. <laughs> hey, that's right. We're all growing and learning, right? We try. Yeah, it's hard. We try. It's hard to get there. Well, hey. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being here. Excited. I'm sure we'll Mm -hmm. have you back again in the future. And hey, for everyone who's watching today, thanks for watching. Uh, Man, we hope that you you had a, a good time today, and we'll catch you at the next episode. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed what you just listened to, take a second, click the like button, or put a comment in the comment section. If you want to get more information or receive all the stuff that we post every single time, click the subscribe button so that it can be sent to you automatically. And as always, know that you are loved, that you are prayed for, and that God has a destiny for you. Have a great day.